is it hard to write Katie, I guess, with heavy emotional weight, whether it's during the past year or in general, you know, is there a limit where you just go, yeah, it's too hard to write during times like this? Um, absolutely. I think that like, I have, as I've gotten older, like I've realized that I'm better at writing songs when I've let myself process an emotion or like, you know, whether that be like, that doesn't mean I can't be like creative or I can't like write, um, like journal. I, I, what I do a lot is like, you know, like you mentioned like all the heavy, like political stuff, obviously the pandemic has been traumatic. I mean, I think you need to like, kind of let yourself feel those hard emotions, kind of process it like journal or whatever I journal personally, or like write poetry or whatever. Um, but not necessarily like write songs because I feel like when I'm being pulled around by my emotions, I can't really effectively like piece a song together. You know, it, it's, yeah. I feel like I have to kind of process it. And then the writing, the best writing kind of happens when I'm already past feeling that emotion and I can then sort of reflect back and remember and recall kind of what it was like without being yanked around by like sadness or anxiety or fear or whatever it may be. Cause like, that's hard. I mean, it's hard to, to feel, you know, to actually be productive when you're experiencing something like that. So that's my personal experience with it. I often have to like work through it first and then reflect back and then write if I can. Uh, so how do you know when you're ready? I, how do you know, is there a time when you say, I processed this. Now I'm going to write about it. How do you know when that time has come? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I guess you don't like always know, but um, for me, like the journaling is really helpful. I've said that like five times, but um, because, you know, I, I find that I can, when I'm reading back, like through my journal entries, like I'll write it and then I'll go back and like read it and remember it. And then yeah, like listen to music or like go watch a movie and then then I'll kind of pick up my guitar and, and see what happens. Molly, how about you? Is it, it what is it like to write in in times of I guess intense emotional weight? Yeah, I think when um I guess last March when quarantine started, I felt like it was hard to really write because I was like Katie said kind of going through all these emotions and it was pretty it was just really stressful to have such a huge dramatic shift in the whole world and um, in my life. And so I think I was putting so much pressure on myself to be productive and like, I have to, I have all this time, like I better make the best use of it. Um, but yeah, just giving myself time to process. And then the other thing that I've kind of shifted into from there is continuing to write songs um, amidst like, feeling upset about things but not putting pressure to write about what's happening like maybe writing a happy song or writing a song about um like I don't know one of my favorite places that I've been or stuff that kind of uplifts me instead of putting pressure to be like okay I have to I'm a deep artist who's going to process everything in the world and all my tough feelings like maybe I'll just write a fun song today because I'm feeling I don't really want to um dig into these feelings that I haven't had time to process yet so that's helped me continue to make new songs. And I've also found that like this year, I've really enjoyed listening to kind of lighthearted music more than in the past. Um, so I that's interesting. That so too. your, so your way of kind of, of, of processing or dealing with this to just write about the, the opposite emotion, right? Enough for the sad stuff. I'm going to write happier songs. To some extent, I think mainly, I guess I've just kind of tried to keep writing and, whatever comes out, whether I'm in the mood to just write something that's going to uplift me. And then maybe months later, I'll write something about um, how I was feeling during the first months of the pandemic, but kind of letting whatever wants to come out and not putting pressure to write what's happening in the moment if I'm feeling upset about something, because it can be overwhelming. Then, And sometimes sure. that deters me from sitting down in the first place if I'm like, okay, I have to tackle this huge emotion I mean, I'm feeling. that's such a daunting task to take yeah. on like you're so right you don't always have to write about the moment you know mm -hmm. that's really awesome so you mentioned hey you mentioned journaling a couple journaling was all i always like to talk about journaling i found that 
songwriters have two camps. Those that journal, actually probably three. Those that journal every day, those that don't journal but wish they did, and those <laughs> that don't journal and have no desire to ever start. So mm -hmm. is journaling a regular part? I guess this is, do, do you write every day in some fashion? And what is that journaling? Are those journals there just as a way? Are those song ideas or just talk about the journaling process? Yeah, uh, no, journals, to me, the journaling is are not song ideas at all. They're just oh, like okay. me talking to, like, it's like a diary entry, you know? It's like, yeah, just basically me talking to myself uh, in the, you know, writing down kind of what's going on in life or how I'm feeling or anything really. Um, and that's why I love it. And I don't necessarily do it every day. I sort of do it maybe like, I don't know when I'm, when I'm trying to process something is typically when I'll pick it up to, to start writing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it because it, there isn't like a particular thing I have to write about or like, I j you just can kind of say whatever you're feeling. And it's that, that kind of loosens me up to like, when I pick up the guitar, I don't have like, um, I don't know, restrictions on myself. I feel like I, I maybe write the best stuff when I'm, when I'm just like trying to, I'm just saying something random and I'm not afraid to say it, even if it's stupid, like, you know, that that's kind of how I feel like when I'm journaling is even if emotion is like unrealistic or kind of like, I know I'm being over dramatic or whatever. Um, it's that vulnerability with yourself um, just to kind of say exactly what's on your mind without anyone, without caring about it, you know? or judging yourself for it do those songs do they do you ever go back to those journals or do they, I, I would imagine though that journaling could be a way to say you know maybe this is best expressed in song has that ever happened to you uh yeah for sure i mean i you know um i definitely journaled a lot kind of during the time when like i had come up to my parents and there was this probably like two-year period where they struggled with it so that was a big <laughs> journaling time for yeah. me and I mean I don't know if I necessarily like pulled lyrics from the journal but I definitely pulled like emotions from the journal of like um yeah I mean I, I think but I don't but I don't really go back and read journal entries all the time I I just you know it's just mainly for me to get out in the moment and then and then I'll remember that emotion later when I'm writing a song yeah. or something Molly, where do you fall in the journaling camp? Are you a pro journaler, anti journaler, or ambivalent? Um, I would say pro journaler, but I don't <laughs> journal all the time. I've gone through, I started journaling when I was in high school and I would journal every single night. I almost <laughs> feel like that was because I didn't have like a phone or many other distractions. I miss just only having my notebook beside my bed. So sometimes I'll try to like keep all the screens and distractions outside of my bedroom and just keep my journal but I found that like I think like during tough times in my life I definitely turn to journaling a lot more just to process stuff also on tour when you you just have so much time and there's nothing going on sometimes I'll just journal um, it's a really good stress relief for me so I I think I wish I did it every single day but I go through phases of doing it every day and then not doing it for a long time <laughs> Do those ever turn into song ideas or are those things separate for you? If I am journaling and I come up with a cool line or like something that I think sounds cool, I'll write it in a different section of song ideas. And, but I don't really go back and read my journals. Kind of like Katie was saying, I want to be super unfiltered. So even the thought of myself reading it back later is embarrassing in a way. <laughs> I'm like no one will read this ever again, not even me. And then I can like feel free to say whatever. But if I somehow stumble upon a little thing that I like, I'll write it down somewhere else. So Molly, what is that ritual? I'm I'm interested in the rituals of writers, you know, songwriters, novelists, you know, regardless of the type of writing that they're doing. Um what is that ritual like for you? Do you have an ideal time of day? place where you get your best writing done is are the things you need to have with you to have an effect you know besides the instrument to have an effective um you know writing session mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i think i guess my most um productive and effective writing sessions are when i have basically like just the minimum things that i need like my guitar some paper maybe i'll write i like writing on my computer sometimes just because i can be faster and um, I have horrible handwriting, so it's easier <laughs> to go back and read. Um, but I try to just keep it, again, like distraction free. So maybe turning off 
internet so I'm not getting like different notifications turning off my phone and just going in a room that's kind of dedicated towards being creative is there a room I I know I have like a go-to chair is there a place you know whether it's true or not I feel like where the mojo is you know where I just feel like this is what's happened before so maybe it'll happen again do you have a place like that for you yeah I mean I have like a room that ideally I would like to work in all the time but like you I kind of gravitate just towards my living room because it's the most comfy and I like it the most so that's my go-to place is just like on my couch usually (laughs) time of day matter are you a morning or night person or does that not matter um I'm trying to make myself more of a morning person because I feel better all day if I'm like oh I was productive in the morning but I'm like such a night person I usually get like a creative burst at nighttime but I'm trying to like retrain myself (laughs) um yeah Katie how about you are you what's that ritual do you have a ritual how important is that ritual to your process um I'm trying to get better at like having an actual ritual it's super hard during quarantine because it's like you know it sometimes like having a routine or a ritual especially if it's the same every day with songwriting gets a little monotonous for me like I have to break it up with like going on a walk or taking my dog to the park or like you know and I'll be like writing lyrics while I'm like walking my dog you know so it's like kind of I'm sort of like trying to write or at least think about songs like I'll throughout the day but I'm kind of like Molly where I do get like these creative uh, bursts like kind of more at more at night my girlfriend's like a morning person so she'll wake up super early and I sleep until like noon <laughs> and then wow. I'll stay up till like three or four some nights and just like you know be with my guitar um but yeah I have like a, it's actually the room I'm in now um and I just I mean I just have like a basic like interface microphone set up and sometimes I'll just turn on Pro Tools and like kind of like mumble like a melody idea or whatever and I'll maybe accidentally say some words that'll end up being the actual words um and it's nice to have you know a microphone just like sort of sit I I literally would just like mumble for three minutes like over a chord progression and like listen back and be like oh that's actually like kind of cool like I think I was saying this in that phrase or in that like part of the song and maybe that'll turn into like the first line of the song and then I think about it and kind of build from there but I also heard this from uh Jack Temption who wrote some songs for the Eagles he wrote Peaceful Easy Feeling and some other songs Uh, and and Jack Temption told me he and Glenn Fry had this they they had that mumbling voice and they called they named it they called it El Blurto and El Blurto was that voice of nonsense words that came out like they would just like you were saying blurt out stuff yeah well, yes blurt out words that eventually would become real words um, yeah so it sounds like that's what you do that that is what I do yeah I mean I think because I think you know what you're trying to say is sort of always like underneath the surface you just have to do like certain things to like shake it up and like become comfortable blurting things out without a filter like molly was talking about that unfiltered kind of process of songwriting that's like what i aim to do because i because yeah i do think that like stuff that you actively think about will make its way into the songs and and then you know you'll kind of be able to formulate a real structured um you know yeah song out of that you know but it it definitely sometimes just starts from like blurting something out. And I think you said something that I, I agree with. And that is that I would, when I was a professor, I told my students, your writing process is always taking place. Like your writing process is taking place as you're eating, as you're sleeping, as you're walking, as you're swimming, right. as you're doing nothing. And if you look at it that way, I think it makes it less daunting. But if you approach the writing process, something only happens when you're sitting down be a lot of anxiety so um are you getting i guess molly or does that are you getting a lot of song ideas from um when you're not sitting in front of the when you're not actually composing do molly do song ideas come to you when you're you know things that you see things that you hear in your environment yeah i think like if i'm in the mindset especially if i am writing a little bit each day and having intentional writing time then my mind kind of goes into that songwriting zone and then I have like this radar without even like just kind of subconsciously looking for song ideas throughout the day and so I write them down um but yeah I get a lot from reading just things that pop into my head um stuff I see and yeah so that's the best when I can get into that mindset of looking for song ideas 
And sometimes I'll even be like a, half asleep and like trying to work on lyrics or like wake up and like I've dreamed some song idea. Usually they're bad, but every now and then they're not horrible. <laughs> yeah. Do you, Katie, do you have hundreds of voice memos? One songwriter told me that if any, it was Brian Fallon. He told me that if any songwriter tells you that they ever go back to those voice memos, they're lying. He goes, I have hundreds <laughs> of those. I never look at, so I, I've many. never gone back. Yeah. So do you, where are they? How often do you honestly go back to them? Um, I, I really hardly go back to them. Sometimes I go back to them when I'm like driving, you know, like instead of when I get sort of like burnt out on like listening to music or podcasts or whatever, I'm like, I wonder like if there's anything good in there or like when I'm on a plane, which hasn't been at all lately. Um, but you know, when I like lose internet, <laughs> I'm like, I wonder what, uh, I wonder what I was thinking, like, you know, six months ago or whatever. And it could be cool, you know? Um, but oftentimes, yeah, I do not, I do not go back, but I like, I, I like what you're saying Molly about like sort of writing songs almost like as you're sleeping, I have literally like woke, woken up in the middle of the night, think I'm like dreaming of the best song I've ever written. And I'm like mumbling it super like yeah. quietly into the phone to like not wake up my girlfriend. And then I'm like, what? I listen back. I'm like, what the, like I just end up deleting those. Cause I'm like, I don't even, that's not even, that's not even English. Like, I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> But it's, um, yeah, it's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I'm, I write these great songs when I'm dreaming. And then yeah. I can't remember what the hell they're about. <laughs> I've, like, woken up crying because it was, like, the most beautiful song I've ever heard. And then I, like, mumble it and hear it back. And it's, like, so random. And, like, <laughs> yeah. Really? Have, you, have wow. you heard that, uh, that Courtney Barnett lyric that's, like, and in my dreams, I wrote the best song that I've ever written. Can't oh, remember yeah. how it goes. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, Molly. So is your phone just filled with voice memos also? And how <laughs> often do you go back to them? Yeah, I have so many on my phone. Um, I don't often go back to the like unnamed ones. If there's one that's like actually a song idea, I'll like give it a song name temporarily. And sometimes I go back to those. The only times I like, I'll, I've also gone back to them on planes too, when you're just like bored and... <laughs> There's nothing else to yeah, do. Yeah, it's a good place to do. Yeah, the other time I times I do is when I'm like in a co-write with someone. Maybe it's like a brand new co-write, and I don't really know where to start. Sometimes I'll just like go through to see if there are any cool ones. Every so often, there's one that I find that's like a hidden gem, but usually, um, usually they're not that <laughs> memorable. <laughs> um, speaking of BJ Barm, uh, he told me something. Uh, it's one of the most amazing responses I've ever gotten. BJ and Katie, you may know this, but he told me he has an 80 page single spaced word document of all of his song ideas organized by theme and by emotion. So wow. he'll have like 80, it's 80 pages. Holy crap. Going. 80 pages. And again, like he'll have like relationship will be the theme. And then the emotions are like happy relationship, sad relationship. And that's how he, he's right. got this incredible filing okay. system that uh, it, it was, it, it blew my mind. Do you have anything? I'm I don't expect them, anyone to have so that. Gonna, I'll bring that up. <laughs> what that? Like, All right, we're going to refer to your 80 page document, BJ. Well, let's see what you got. <laughs> it, it's on video. Go to it's on. So he, he did say it. It's confirmed. But he said he has gotten he's that's constantly awesome. adding to it. And that's how he goes back to look for song ideas. Um, cool. Katie, you mentioned movement. And this is something that I believe in. And a lot of songwriters have told me this too how many song ideas they get when they are. Uh, walking, uh, walking the dog, um, swimming, I've heard, uh, you know, driving, running, which is biking. dangerous. <laughs> yes. Right. But, but um, I interviewed Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam a few months ago. And he has this whole theory about literally, you know, bipedal movement, how the cadence and the rhythm of your limbs actually contributes to song ideas. Um, wow. And some songwriters told me, one of them re recently told me, um, that they get a song idea from the turn signal, the time signature of the turn signal on his car. Um, wow. So I guess that's kind of a several part question, but do you get along with song ideas when you're not necessarily driving, but when you're walking or walking the dog that, you know, and then maybe just movement in general? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I definitely write a lot of lyrics when I'm walking my dog and, and like, you know, Maybe I'll have a melody in my head. Maybe I won't. Maybe they're just like, I'm just like writing lyrics about 
just what I'm thinking about, but I do find my brain is like just way more active when I'm moving. Um, but yeah, I also, oddly enough, definitely write a lot of songs like in the car. <laughs> like, um, I just feel While like there's driving? a lot of information, you know, like when you're driving, there's a lot to take in. Like, it's like fast paced, like people watching, you know, like you see like someone on the side of the road, like begging for money or like, so, you know, like there's just like a lot of information out there and like, there's a lot of thoughts to have about those, those things and a lot of feelings that you get by just like taking it in. Um, but yeah, I, I've actually like crashed my car before, uh, like totaled my car writing a song. So I have to like, be careful. Wait, this um, is a thing you, know. you actually totaled it. Yes, I totaled it. I, I, which, so I was like, all right, I need to, because, yeah, you know, I write story. lyrics on my phone. So it's like just as bad as like texting. I just, <laughs> I had to learn that like probably early on, but, um, yeah, no, I, I told, I, I crashed into another car, like at a four way stop. And I was like, God, that song wasn't even that good. Like, why did I, <laughs> why so it didn't, it didn't even make it to the album. Didn't make it to the album. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But hey, uh, yeah, it's all right. It, it worked out okay. Everyone was fine, but I need to uh, be careful when I'm writing songs and I'm driving. <laughs> uh, wow, that's a good story. Um, it's not that good of a story. It's, well, it's, I've never I don't heard that before. It. No, yeah, definitely. Let's make it very clear. That's not recommended. Um, don't, don't do it. Molly, how about you? Do you get song ideas when you're moving, whether it's you know walking or anything like that or, or driving? Yeah, I get a lot when I'm walking, not as many driving, although I have like, usually when I'm driving, I guess I'm listening to music, so I don't get as many while listening, but sometimes if I'm not, I'll get them while driving, but I'm like early on last year in the pandemic, I had a really like, it was such a fun co-write where I was walking and coming up with lyrics, and I came up with a lot while I was walking and sent them to my friend, and by the time I had walked back home, he had like made a little track and like come up with a melody for them that was so cool so I think like something about the moving really does like free up my creative mind I think and makes me a bit more unfiltered because I'm not like focusing so hard on writing lyrics so I think it kind of does the same thing as we were talking about with journaling where you feel just kind of like your creative mind is open in a way I find that going out and walking is a great way and I'm stuck uh, mm -hmm. when I feel like the words just aren't coming anymore. Um, so do you use that also as a way, it, it, when, when you find that, you know, you're in a rut, do you find that exercise or walking is a way to kind of free yourself from that? Or if not, are there things that you do, techniques that you use when you find that you're stuck? Um, yeah, I think walking, going on a walk, taking a break, like being active in general, I think just kind of like tapping into your body and, um, yeah, just getting in tune with yourself can be good. I like to meditate or do a bit of yoga, um, but I think walking is great for that. Too. Yeah. Um, Katie, do you use techniques when you find that things aren't happening? Do you think it's good to push through or set it aside and do something else? I think um, it depends. Like if, you know, if it's the type of wall where you're like sitting there for, you know, 30, 40 minutes and you have, you just, you're stuck. Like, yeah, get, get out, drop the guitar, like go, you know, I, I have a bike, I'll, I'll ride my bike and listen to music, like listen to another song that might give me an idea for the song I'm working on. Um, yeah, I feel like definitely listening to music yeah. gives me ideas more, more so when I'm stuck, like, just like remember why I love music and songwriting and listen to my favorite songwriters and go like, oh man, like that was cool how they like turned that phrase like I could you know you don't necessarily steal like but you you hear it you like sort of when you're kind of a student of songwriting you hear how they get to um certain moments in the song and how they how they do it you know is there a Molly is is, is there a song that stands out in anything that you've written what was the, as being, I guess, the greatest struggle that was really hard for you to write? I don't mean emotionally, it's just it was hard to finish and you maybe gave up on, but you pushed through and you're glad that you did. Does one stand out as being like that one that was just a real struggle? Let me think about that. Um, hmm. I think like one on my first ever EP that I did, um, Good Enough is a song off of that EP and 
that one it just I remember writing it for such a long time because I really wanted like each verse to say a specific thing and like make the chorus mean specific things and it was just hard to um really find the exact right words to use in that song um Katie how about you is there a song that you just wanted to give up on but you pushed through and you're glad that you did yes um there was a recent song, uh, it's called Look the Other Way, and I released it this summer. And I was, you know, like, I just couldn't come up with a chorus. Like, I had all these verses that were sort of like, you know, the first verse is about gentrification, like, you know, just how uh, cities get, you know, family-owned businesses get torn down and, you know, corporations kind of, like, take over. And then the second verse is about the government and, like, the third verse I wrote last and it's about, you know, George Floyd and like the, the protests and everything that's, um, but I don't know. I think that was a time where I was feeling really overwhelmed by information. Um, I think we all were, you know, it's just like, there's so many problems. Like, where do you start? Like kind of, um, and what do you do, um, to not like contribute to the problem and to like help instead of hurt it, you know? Um, but yeah, I was like, I was staying in, in Idaho at my girlfriend's parents' house. We were uh, staying there for like, I think it was like three weeks straight. And I was just literally like waking up at like 2 a.m. Cause I couldn't like, I was like, I need to finish this song. Um, and like just going to the bathroom, like lighting a candle, closing the door and like just trying to get a chorus. And one, and one night I did and I was like, yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but it was really like, it was super difficult to get to. And I'm, I'm glad I did. Cause I end up, like, I ended up really, you know, liking the song and I knew I wanted to write something that kind of like met the moment, but it was so hard to articulate, you know? And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to tie these very different issues together into one cohesive um, topic, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you revise? How much revising do you do your lyrics, Katie? Um, it depends. I, um, I feel like you, when you write a verse or a chorus that you feel good about generally, I, if I, if I revise, um, it's like one word here or there, but I typically like can at least four or five lines together. I usually, that's like a complete thought, you know, like I get it out kind of all at once. Um, but as far as like arranging different, like, Oh, this verse actually is the last verse. But like I do definitely like write in like breaths or like some like four or five lines at a time that will probably will stay together, you know. Exactly. Um but as far as like piecemealing verses and choruses or whatever, I, I will like rearrange or like edit, you know, change a, a pronoun or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Uh Molly, how about you? Do you do you do a lot of revising to your lyrics? I do usually like before going in to record them, I'll go back to them because usually at least in the last few years, what I've mainly done is like write the song, record it, um, have like a version of it. And then once I've decided that I like it, then I'll go back once there's been some space between writing it every so often, like, well, I guess with most songs before I end up demoing them or whatever, I will have like a day or two where I'm thinking about them a lot and editing them. But then I kind of, leave them for a while and then come back to them to make sure they're I'm saying everything I want to say before recording. Um, so I, I do quite a bit of editing, I guess. And a lot of it is like changing one line or kind of listening and hearing which lines stand out to me or which lines make me cringe a little bit or whatever and going back and changing those. Um, so yeah, I love editing kind of. It also drives me. <laughs> no, I've never said that. I have That's to do great. it. I'm too much of a... <laughs> I've never actually heard that. I love editing. <laughs> I, just, I can't let that go and not pursue that. Definitely. So, um, why do you like editing so? OCD. <laughs> so I just like the feeling of like really picking it apart. It kind of like, I think it drives me crazy, but it, it's also very satisfying once you mm. have edited a song a few times. It's like a puzzle, right? Like once you have like, 
yeah. all of the pieces and the melody, you can kind of like ditch the guitar and like just be on the couch, like yeah, you know, or wherever. About it all day if you want, like what's yeah, like, like the melody's just repeating in your head. And you're like, could I say <laughs> another line there if I wanted? Yeah, no, I I hear you. It can be satisfying when you have like the program and the the sort of the form already built. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I would worry that if you like editing so much, you could edit too much, right? I mean, at some point, you know, you could be doing too much and really change the the original intent of the song, right? Yeah, I think I like, I try and try to keep old versions. And I think there are songs that I've kind of edited too much. And then they've almost like lost what I liked about them. And either I'll like go try to find the original version um, or just kind of move on to a different song. Um, but yeah, I've definitely spent a lot of time editing certain songs. And then in the end, they've just like lost whatever magic they had at the beginning. So there's a balance. Yeah. For sure. um, okay, last question. Um, Molly, we'll stick with you. I find that songwriters are voracious readers. Uh, and typically reading has a big influence on people's songwriting as well. So how much reading do you get to do and who are some of your favorite authors and what impact, uh, if so, does that have on your songwriting at all? Yeah. Um, I'm not like, I love reading, but this year, especially, I feel like my just attention for reading books has gotten smaller. I think I've just been a little stressed out and just because of everything happening and um but I've been reading an amazing book called Overstory that I love I read some Joan Didion earlier this year that was really inspiring um she's one of my favorites for sure um yeah. who wrote Overstory I'm trying to remember I can't remember the guy's name who wrote it but that's an amazing book I'm like slowly making my way through it this year um yeah I do love reading I just I found in the past 2020 was a weird reading year for me where I would like get a hundred pages into a book and then stop and move on to the next book. I think my attention span just got smaller or something, unfortunately. <laughs> Katie, how about you? How much, how much do you read and who are some of your favorite authors? Um, my attention span is also very short. So that's kind of also how I read. Um, Audible has been like kind of my best friend, but I'll do Audible and then I'll also either have like a physical copy or like a copy on my phone list so I'm like literally reading along while I'm listening that's I did that with like Jeff Tweedy's uh autobiography yeah, yeah. uh let's go so we can get back great book um just kids Patty Smith I actually yep. did, did read like the physical copy of that one that was awesome um but yeah I mean Patty Smith that book just like she's such a visual writer I feel like that kind of like changed my view of like instead of writing of like you know i i feel this i was doing this like tell me where you are um mm -hmm. and that kind of like she's really good at just like putting you in a place like you read a paragraph and you know exactly where she is you know what she's like you know what does it smell like what does it like sound like who's you know if she's like at a coffee shop or a cafe like she'll she'll just paint every vivid uh picture of that scene and i feel like i've been trying to do that more like in my songs um but yeah i i kind of like will pick up a book and and read it for like a second and then and then i'll get distracted or something in the book will like inspire me and i'll like pick up my guitar you know so i i get very distracted with reading which is why audible is like yeah it's exactly. good for my add brain uh like if i'm on a plane i'm like i'm sitting there i'm listening to the book you know i'm not hmm. my focus is on that one thing but typically i just have like a million books like on my desk and i'll just like pick up and read something and then put it down you know 